Today's episode is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all the while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone, from adults to teens to children, can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Wait, what? wait, wait, Mark, Mark. What? Wait, hold up. What? Dude, it's, that's the intro. You messing my intro. It's that time of year. Oh. What it's, time of year is that? It's Halloween. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have conversations about faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And on today's episode, we're leaning into our holiday annual episode of this year. We're talking about horror films and haunted houses. Fuller, you ready to get spooked? Let's go, master. Happy Halloween, Fuller! I, I never switched the camera over. We told I messed it up. I'm sorry. Oh, if people are new, they're like, "What the heck just happened?" They're like, "This is some really creepy stuff for a Christian podcast." This is our third Halloween episode. It is the very first one was with Brandon Soshi. Oh, and if we should even celebrate Halloween. Ooh. Last year, we did a bonus episode. Yeah, what was it? What was uh, it called? Extraterrestrials. That's right. We talked about aliens, aliens and are aliens real? And if they are real, should we tell them about Jesus? How does this work? Well, today, I figured, you know, we're going to break the uh, the flow in our podcast. We're gonna just going to slap this one on Halloween week. Bam. So, um, so the next episode might be a little off-flowing, but that's going to be all right. It's going gonna, it's it's gonna gonna to be all right. It's going to be good. We're talking about horror films. Haunted houses, and should Christians even participate in stuff like that? <laughs> now, now, I have to ask, Voller, were, yeah. are you, were you a big, like, horror movie fan? Like, at least, how about back in the day? Were you a big horror film fan back, back in the day? Back in the day, there wasn't a horror film I wouldn't watch. Really? Oh, yeah. So, what, like, what type of horror film was an OG Fuller? Ooh, you know? like, real old G? Because, like, I've been watching horror films for a very, very long time. I've like, watched two in my entire, three. I, I remember three Nightmare on Elm life. Street, no. like, like soon after it dropped. I'm just saying. It was dropped off in the 80s, and I probably was watching it by 93 or 94. Nightmare on... Freddy Krueger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, you got the classic Scream. I believe that was out in 1997. Remember 96? when they used to have the Scream costumes and you could have the little blood pump in your hand and you could make the blood flow down your face? Mm-hmm. I always wanted one, and my mom always said no. I and never then, knew why. And then you always had the Scream guy, and he'd be like, what's up? What's up? Yep. <laughs> it's true. But, yeah, so I used to watch all the, you know, Freddy Krueger, the, the Child's Play, you know, with... Uh, the uh, what the what's the doll's name? I forget his name now. Chucky. Chucky. Thank you. Yeah, Chucky. Chucky's bride. Chucky returns. Yeah. Uh, Jason. I watched Jason. I watched Alien. I watched. And then you know, got- Alien versus Predator. Though I I watched that one, but that one didn't seem like a horror movie. Well, that so was then I got like- into The Ring. You know, did you okay, I will ring? say I I thoroughly enjoyed The Ring. I'm oh, not gonna lie. Oh, I didn't. I enjoyed Mo- The Ring. Mothman Prophecy. Don't know that one. I've only seen the Ring One, Ring Two. Ring Two was Exorcist. way more demonic. I used to watch a bunch of the, all the Exorcist, parano- my, paranormal activities. My my level of horror film is more like The Village, where it's not even horror. Yeah, it's like suspense. Yeah, that's not horror. Whatsoever. It's not horror whatsoever. Anyways, so so those, you were a big horror film I, film back I, I, in horror film film horror horror film guy. I, I I was pretty big into horror films back back in the day. So with you being a horror film guy, were you also a haunted house guy too? Like Screen uh, Fest? Not Screen Fest. That's not, that's not no, the right No, I was never really a Haunted House guy because they were pretty boring. <laughs> like, okay, so. Oh, goodness. Even Niles? Apparently, Niles, I thought was her. I heard it was pretty good. I've never been. It, when you know it's not real, it's not scary. That's true. I don't. I just don't like paying people to scare me. Like, but, that doesn't sound but fun. But, like, it was, you know, Janelle is, like, complete opposite of me. Or she was. I mean, I'm more towards Janelle style now. But, but, so, yeah, but back, when we, her, but no. back when we first got married, I took her to the Haunted Mansion down at Disney World. Oh, the ride. The ride. The ride was fun, though. And I just cracked up the entire time. It was I hilarious. Could, I was laughing, I laughing, laughing so hard, I was crying. And Janelle's just like... <laughs> she was sitting... Janelle, you were terrified like in that? Janelle's got a very sensitive spirit to dark things, which That's I, fair. Lo- That's I fair. love about her. 
I very much love that about her. She uh, very, yeah, you can't even talk about dark things. So she, I wouldn't be surprised if she wasn't even listening to this episode. Now, this has nothing to do with the episode, but I will say, you know, with dark things and voodoo and stuff like that, I actually don't watch The Princess and the Frog. That's one of the very few Disney we, movies that we, I won't watch. I've wa- I, I used to watch it all the time, but I don't watch it anymore because as I've grown closer to Christ, my spirit has gotten more sensitive. And so I don't even watch any of that. Anymore. Voodoo just scares Nothing. the bejesus out of me. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't even watch, like, I don't even like watching rated R movies, period. Like, even PG-13s, a lot of them are like, yeah. But I can there's a out. new Matrix coming out. That one I might have I'm to watch. So because, but so it's not excited. scary. It's not scary. It's like John Wick. You know, I can maybe, if we got clear play, I could watch it. <laughs> That's true. But hey, let's not get too far in the conversation. Anyways, yeah. we still got to do our thing, you know? Yes, I think. Well, this is part of the banner. But first, <laughs> before we go any further, we didn't do this. Uh, we haven't done this uh, since last episode, but let's go ahead and do it now. <laughs> <laughs> you almost said we haven't done it in a while, but we, yeah, we've done it recently, yeah. buddy. So let's do the Would You Rather. Hey, right, I'm ready. Would You Rather. Are these horror film related? No. Halloween related? No. Then what are we doing? I don't know. Uh, I'm ready for I got to find one we haven't done yet. Uh, you know we've done this ooh, a lot when we've here run we run out of content. Okay, okay, we're ready. Would you rather know exactly what happened in Area 51 or accept $1 million? Ooh, 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 ooh. I'll take the mill. I don't care what happened in 51. But if I know... You could sell and, it. And people won't believe me, though. You could make a movie out of it. I could. But do I have to pay taxes on this $1 million? It doesn't say. Then I'm taking the $1 million. $100 million. No. 78% agree with us. $1 million. Oh, I agree. said $100 million, didn't I? My bad. But no, I said $100. You said but so, so, so how many people voted for $1 mil? 78% for $1 mil. There you go. 22% for no one 51. And those are just some weirdos. That's the dude who does the Naruto run, like across <laughs> Area 51. And <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got, bro? What else we got? Uh, I have a commercial on my phone oh. right now. Does that count for anything? Do you got one uh, pulled up on your phone? I don't, but I have the review ready. Well, let's, uh, well, hey, wait, hang on, hang on. Oh, are hang we ready? On, hang on. Just about there. It's almost time. And we just, uh, we should never just talk to anyone again or never eat a meal that tastes good again. So either have COVID or talk e- to people? E- either never talk to anyone again or never taste food. Never taste food. I, w- I, c- I could not not talk to people. I'm an introvert. But we're talking your kids, your wife, your folks. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast. This is Mark without Fuller because he can't. He's sitting here, but he can't talk to you. So 54% say uh, never eat a meal that tastes good again. Well, it's like, why would I not want to talk to people? But it doesn't say you don't have, no t- ha- don't have a taste. You just don't taste good food. So does that mean you can only taste bad food? So like white like White Castle, I gotta eat White Castle the rest white of my Castle's life. White Castle's good, bro. You know I've never had a slider. What? I've never had a slider. You've never lived. <laughs> my bowels have though. Wow. <laughs> no, you haven't. Taco Bell. Uh, that's that's true. That's All right, true. Let's, uh, let's. I got another review to read, bro. Well, hang on, wait a oh, sec. Okay, what? We haven't talked about Brew It Forward. Oh well, we can't. Well, people don't know about it yet. Yes, they do. They know about it yet. Heck yeah, they do. I don't know if they know about it yet. Based on when we dropped this episode, maybe they do. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about we it. We have a coffee sponsorship, people, <laughs> called Brew It Forward Coffee Co. Brew It Forward. If this is the first time you've heard about it, just welcome. Welcome. If this is the second time you've heard about it, welcome, welcome again. back. <laughs> but Brew It Forward Coffee Co., Brew It Forward Coffee Co. Dot com, run by Jared and Mary Ann, some amazing people, where all the proceeds for this coffee goes towards um, helping halfway houses, helping uh, foster care communities, helping boys and girls. Places not like just, the Ronald McDonald. Yeah. And, and basically, and people who, uh, specifically boys and girls who need help. They help them. And, and both Jared and Mary Ann both come from broken homes. Yeah. And they were like, you know what? God's blessed us in some really cool ways. We love making coffee. We got a heart to do this. Let's just go for it. So we have our subscription that we get as a part of being a part of the family. But, but you got yes. something too. What do they get, Fuller? If you order now, not a subscription, but a, like a single time order and use the coupon code RTC, you will get 10% off of your order, which... That's like tax and three more percent off. I'm just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Like that's good stuff right there. So that means if you get a, you order a hundred dollars worth of coffee, that's ten bucks off. I love it. So yeah, check them out. Brew it forward. Brew it forward. Coffee, coffee co. dot com. I'm reading through our reviews. Did we read this one already? Because I feel like we made fun of ourselves when we when we read that. No, we didn't. We haven't read that one. 
Right, Ooh. but did someone call? Did someone else call us a grass fed? Or we, we no, just make a joke? No, no. We just made a joke I was that, making jokes. We made about joke that it. someone did it. I don't think we read this one either. Oh nope. wait, these are old ones. Hang on. No, those are new ones. Those are new ones. Mm. We read those. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We haven't read that one. So, so this one, one is from the. We are a professional show, ladies and gentlemen. Not the from the, best. the KDP. KDP. Real talk all the time. Even yeah. when Mark and Fuller disagree, which it's actually kind of been a while, uh, they still d- discuss and come to a final consensus. The loving grizzly bear of a Fuller and the grass fairy Mark <laughs> are a perfect duo to spread <laughs> the word of the Lord. This is the only podcast that I listen to, and I love it. Um, can we have a little chit chat though? Grass fairy. I, I, I'm wearing my soccer warm up jacket right now too, so I guess you can call me a grass. You fairy. look like a grass fairy. Thank you. And though. I got the beard going on, so the grizzly bears. <laughs> but we're apparently the perfect duo to spread the word, and I, we, we we're going to take it. And we might disagree tonight. Who knows? Who knows? We're going to find out. I'm actually curious to see where both of us land on this one. <laughs> so today we have two questions to answer. We're going to try to keep it short, but we'll see if we actually do it or not. Well, we're Ooh. at ten. Uh, we're at eleven minutes. So you're welcome. You're welcome. So, but today's two questions are that we want to talk about: are, are horror movies okay for Christians to watch? And then the second one is: are haunted, haunted, are haunted houses okay for Christians to participate in? I just want to call it haunted now. Haunted houses. It's all because you got a wife from Tennessee. Haunted. <laughs> She's actually from Martinsville, well, which I guess is still a bunch of hillbillies and hicks down there anyways. Wow, it's true. That. Down down there near that. near Bloomington, Indiana. Um, but either way, so I figured these are kind of like one and the same where do we participate in things that scare us? I think that was kind of the general idea behind the episode, you know? Scary. 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 <laughs> so here's just, you know, I was doing a lot of reading about just, okay, yep, our, yep. our haunted houses, our horror films, are they okay for Christians to watch? And I thought it was good. Okay, let's start about what the purpose is. Cause a lot of people don't talk about the purpose. Yeah. They just go right into their opinions. Yeah, let's go, but let's go through the, some of the, the information that you yeah, found Yeah, let's go for through us. for some of the info, some stats and some, some yeah. statistics Statist- as we go through. So grass fairy. what's the purpose of a horror movie in a haunted house? Very simply put, it's to scare the crap out of you. Like, literally, they want you to poop your pants. In fact, Where depends. one of my favorite videos to watch is when Ellen DeGeneres sends her producer uh, Andy into haunted houses, and he yes. he says, like, the it's funniest funny. things I have ever heard come out of a man's Like, it's he good. flips the snot out, and they go to worse and worse and worse ones where now, like, they can touch, like, they'll touch him, and he just loses his marbles, and I'm here for it. I am, I, I, I'm not a big fan of haunted houses, but I am a big fan of watching Ellen's producer get scared. Yep, I am a very big fan of that. Um, Sorry. But so it's a scared, literally, the tar out of us. So, but yep. movies, though, they tend to focus on the demonic realm or intense evil to scare us, whether right. it's um, demon possessed things or weird, contr- like spirit controlled things or murders monsters, and monsters yeah, right. and all these different things. Whereas haunted houses use, you know, somewhat scary images and shuck and all techniques. Shuck it all. They literally want you to jump out of your shoes where a horror movie wants you to hide behind a pillow and cry and then have nightmares about it and go to the fetal position. And, you know, so I was thinking about this. I'm like, okay, so our haunted houses and cause it, you know, it's big in this area because we have haunted ha- the, the, the Niles haunted house, which Springs in, big. and it brings in buku dollars. Yep. Uh, we also, over in Elkhart, have Scream Park. Mm-hmm. We have that. Um, and we have lots of horror movies. And, Scream you know, Park, aren't they out of... They're right off of Oh, Capitol. I'm sorry. Osceola. They're yeah. off... Yeah, they're right Capitol off of Capitol. And, and McKinley, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Just just west of Elkhart. But I think there's another one in Elkhart somewhere, too. I don't know. But, you know, Probably. even downtown, like, areas will have these... Or even, like, these VAR... Like, VA arcades or whatever. VA arcades. We here in the Midwest reality. don't have much we going on. We don't have a lot, but we have a lot of corn, so we just lean into that. So we just... The children of the corn and all day. We just lean into it. But I was like, you know what? How much, do, how much money do these people actually make? Like, is it really that big of a deal so i did the google and i got some statistics there are not real real statistics on horror films but they do say that when you look at how much the movie cost versus how much the movie made sometimes these movies make more like gross than marvel makes on some of their movies right um so the it series remember it with the balloon remember when we had the clown scares like the clown like the clown threats or whatever like we had a clown threat at our church during one of our youth group events so i actually had to call a cop and like like one of the local ones and figure out what to do about all that have you ever seen the it movie no come on i don't watch horror movies bro hi georgie you, you, do you want to put? Do you want a balloon, Georgie? Is that the guy who hides in the sewer and like oh, drinks people in the sewers? Pennywise. So, um, it or uh, sorry, yeah, the it series, the it series, it. Yeah, they, they come oh, and they put viruses on your computer. Between the two <laughs> movies, now the first movie made way more and they spent way less. But I just combined the two. They only spent one hundred and four million, only. but they brought in one hundred and seventeen billion. One point one. Sorry, one point one seven billion dollars. So. 
that's like what they made tenfold. They ten yeah. k'd like they legit like that's an investment right there. Um, the four purge films, yep. um, which I don't know if they're making another one right now or not, but they spent a total of thirty five million on just the four films alone, and they made four hundred and fifty million dollars. So again, a little over ten times more. Right, and so these are ten k investments. If you now, there's some like that don't really make that much money. Let's just be honest. But some of these good ones, and this is a, this was from ScreenRant.com. But needless to say, these movies made some money. And so I was looking at okay, so that's how much movies make. But what about haunted houses? They say that the large ones make between two to three million per season, and season being like two months. So two months out of the year, or maybe right, three yeah. depends. I where mean, it's, it's pretty at. much September and October. Is right, really maybe in November if you're in a warm area, I guess. Mm, I don't know. Not really. But so for, over two months, they make $3 million for a big haunted house. Now, the small ones, like the low-key ones, like yeah. the mom and pop ones, they can still make up to $50,000 over, wow. over the two months. And that was from findyouranswer.com. Um, and now, even though that doesn't sound like a real website, it actually, there are some real stats behind it, which I thought was really fascinating. But needless to say... America spends a lot of money going to haunted houses, and they spend a, a lot of money watching horror films. But mm-hmm. the question that we have to answer is, is is it acceptable or okay for a Christian to watch or participate in these things? Mm. Well, I, I like what you got here. I want you I want you to keep on going. You got a couple scriptures here with your next Yeah, question. so I read a lot of different uh, opinion pieces and articles sure, about sure. just... You know, should Christians do it or not? And the one that I read was probably the funniest one. There's seven reasons, and every single one of them was, it sounded like yeah, he was dragged to a haunted house, and he got scared, so he wrote an article about it. Like, that's kind mm. of the vibe I got. There's a lot of just opinions. There were some verses, but they were all out of context. But, like, the biggest one that I've seen a lot of people use from all the stuff I read and people I've talked about is from Ephesians 4.27, which says, don't give the devil an opportunity, or don't give the devil a foothold. That's that's the verse you hear from King Jimmy. You know, you don't want to give the devil a foothold in right, your life. Right. And a lot of people will use that revolving around horror movies of, if you give the devil a foothold watching horror movies, you don't want to bring that bad juju. You don't want to bring that, that like that, uh, the bad demonic vibes into your life, because if you're watching these things, you're opening up the portal of your heart for satanic things to happen to you, which... I'm not going to disagree with because we we both have stories and we both have heard many stories. But the problem is, is that's not what that verse is even talking about. It's It's talking about your anger right? and the fact of don't give the devil an opportunity to destroy you because you are holding on to anger and bitterness against somebody. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, you can't use that verse because it's not even talking about that subject. Now, of course, we don't want to give devil an opportunity in our lives to to ruin us. Mm -hmm. You know, you see that with pride. You see that with uh, gluttony. You see that with lust, all these little different things where, you know, if you give an inch, you lose a mile type thing. Right. So I think there's some validity to that idea. Um, but the other verse that I read a lot was uh, Psalm 51.10 that says, you know, God created me or God created a clean heart in me and renew a steadfast spirit within me in terms of I want to have a clean, pure heart and a spirit in letting in demonic and horror and murder and blood and gruesome and fear into my life, well, that's not creating clean heart. That's creating fear and trepidation and worry. Right. And, you know, this verse is found in a part of a larger section of Psalms that David actually wrote after Nathan um, called him out for his sin with Bathsheba. So this was the fact of, you know, David, you know, uh, basically raped Bathsheba, got her pregnant, killed Uriah, then took her as his own wife to make sure it was all covered up, you know, that keep it squeaky, squeaky clean. And Nathan was like, um, yeah, this is not okay. And Dev- David goes, yeah, you're right. I messed up. God, all this crap create a clean heart in me, renew me from the sin that I actively committed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I read these two verses, one talks about anger, one talks about you did an act of sin and you're asking God to cleanse you of that. Can those verses even be used in horror films to talk about horror films or demonic presence or anything like that? Um, but are there any verses that pop up in your mind? Because I know I see you scrolling, so I, I'm like, you're looking for something. I, I am scrolling. You're looking for something. I am scrolling, but it's more to talk about. I, I agree, you know, some of these are taken out of context, but there are, um, there, there, there's one that came to mind, and I'm looking for it right now. I mean, there's the one where it talks about we wrestle not against flesh and yeah, blood, but against Ephesians, principalities. Yeah, and that's, that's I, Ephesians, I actually yeah. just I just pulled it up. Ephesians six twelve. Yeah, it says for our struggle is not against flesh and bloods, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we obviously see there are spiritual forces of evil. Um. <clears throat> Second Timothy four eighteen, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to the heavenly kingdom. 
Um, uh, <clears throat> and then obviously the math, uh, the Lord's prayer from Matthew six, you know, let us not yield to temptation, but rescue us from evil. But I think that's more talking about like what you were saying, like, Right, and, and I guess that may have to be a question of with horror films and, and haunted houses, are they causing you to want to kill somebody? Like, well, are they leading you to sin? The the the, you know? the thing that, to me, is what is, I guess we'd have to classify what is evil. Because, yes, yeah, okay, anger, yeah. anger and pride is evil, but there's also evil spirits. And Romans, I believe, 12 tells us to hate those, do good and hate those things that are evil. Right. Uh, I believe it was Romans 12 nine let me look it up i'll read it if i can find it we're doing a lot of bible on the fly people yeah but, sorry but basically, yeah, this is, well, yeah. cl- cling to what is good and a poor evil i think that yeah that yeah. goes along with that passage right too. let me find it real fast just so i'm not missing. can we it. just say i don't know how people back in the day live without the google because yeah, like i'm over here thinking you. i'm like man there's a ver- i mean okay the answer is gonna be memorization that's gonna be the answer the answer is a wanna <laughs> so, so we use the google this is it's talking about uh, the, the title of this section of Romans 12, it says, marks of a true Christian. <laughs> Ooh, okay. But it says, let, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Who fa- uh, Hold fast to what is good. And then love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. So it's just that little point of abhor evil. So I think to even answer this, we have to kind of classify what is like what evil. Is evil. Yeah. Well, it's anything that's the opposite of good would be evil. Well, what's good? Anything that comes from God, right? Because God right. is is the creator of good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, so what, uh, I guess my question for me, and I guess we're going to get into opinion time now. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 <laughs> that's all, yeah. That's pretty much the scriptures of, uh, I mean, that's where we got to classify it. Is, it's, are, are we classifying... Horror films is evil, or the things in horror films are they portraying evil? Um, and same with the haunted houses, right? I, I guess that's where we have to we have to establish that line first. So, to me, my opinion, this is just my opinion. I'm going to let you give your opinion on this matter. My opinion is, if it's portraying something evil, then it's not probably something good or something that I want to fill myself with. Okay. Um. It, the whole haunted house thing, it revolves around a holiday that I do not particularly agree with. Which or, side note, are you guys going, to, oh, wow, I can't even talk. Are you guys going to Fazoli's again this year? I don't know. I don't know. If Your old Halloween tradition? That's, it's not really a Halloween tradition. It's just, uh, hey, we don't want to be at the house when people come a knocking. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically why we do it. Um, you know, we don't celebrate Halloween. We, we think that Halloween is a celebration of evil things, and so we abstain from evil. You know, that, and that's that's our family's take on the holiday, and I think that's what Ahana House is surrounded. It's like I, I compare that with, like, going to get a Christmas tree in Christmas time. Like, going to get a Christmas tree is directly correlated with Christmas. Right. Going to a haunted house is directly correlated with Halloween. Going to get a costume is directly correlated with Halloween. And so that's where, to me, it's like I just abstain from it. But but how do we handle, like, you know, kids and dress up and wearing Disney princess dresses? Because, you know, we got dress up galore at the Hyde House. Yeah, I know you guys do. And, again, my personal opinion, my per- and we've talked about this last or two years ago. Just two years talked, ago by now. Wow. Two, yeah, two years two ago. Two years ago, man. Yeah, it's crazy. But two years ago, we talked about how um, my family uh, does not believe we should even participate uh, in, in dressing up because it shows support for a holiday that is revolved around evil. And that's what it celebrates. Right. Like, and see, and for our family, and you know this, like we dress up, we go trick or treating, we pass out candy, we get involved in our community and try that in, in that regards to, to A, connect with our community and, and meet people and connect and whatnot. But also, it's just the fact of, yeah, let's go get some free candy. Let's go. Yeah. And see, to me, I, know? Still, I still take the, the stance of, uh, I can go buy my kids candy at any time. I don't need strangers giving my kids candy. So, Plus, so, I don't know what's in that candy that those strangers are giving my kids. So, 
To me, it's a protection thing. I mean, a, I use that excuse when my kids get Reese's just because I don't know what they gave you when this Reese's, yeah. little buddy. So I'm going to eat this just or, to protect you. You know, this is protection <laughs> of dad tax, okay? This is just the dad tax. Oh, yo, man. My mom used to eat the curl off our ice cream cones. And now I was like, man, I hated that. But now as an adult, I love You're it. You're like, let me lick around let the me, edges. Let me here. lick around the edges to make sure you're good to go. But so if someone went to a haunted house, though, like, or someone asked you your opinion, you would say that that's the same correlation as why would you want to participate in the things that are of evil? Right. That, and that's, that's where I'm at. Uh, of, even with watching horror films, um, it's portraying something evil. The whole premise of that haunted house of watching that horror film is to use evil to scare you to get an adrenaline rush. Because mm-hmm. that's what it is, us getting the heebie-jeebie scared out of us. It produces an adrenaline rush. Well, why do I need that? Me, I, personally, I find my adrenaline rush any time, you know, there's a miraculous healing or a prayer's answer, man. That, that gets my adrenaline going. I don't need none of the jumpy jump stuff. <laughs> right. And see, for me, I don't like paying people to scare me. Like, that's just what it is. Right. Now, I had a lot of teens over the years who love going to Niles Haunted House, and they have a good time, and sure. it's fun. And they always ask me, Mark, can we do a youth group event? And I'm like, if, if you want me to get fired, we can have a youth group event to you know, Niles Haunted House. Now, um, I almost went with a group of them one year because it was just they were going. So, hey, Mark, you want to come with us? And I was like, oh, yeah, it'd be cool. But, you know, I think it was like Halloween night. I was taking Elliot trick-or-treating, so it just didn't work out. Um, but I personally don't like to pay somebody to scare me. But I'm also on the side of if someone wants to go to a haunted house and just pay for someone to have the heebie-jeebie scared out of them, I say it's up to you, bro. If you want, Now, I think the ones where they actually do these weird, like, gag and torture and water because they want to have this like horror when people are going to seek these pain filled weird almost murder-esque experiences which you have to sign a waiver in case something happens or you freak out or pass i'm like okay that's that's crossing a line that's so they could do something to you at these most of these haunted houses they're still they're just jumping out no they're still portraying it they're jumping out with chainsaws and and right and it's because of all those years of horror films that uh, of murder and all this stuff that's why it scares you it's still the same premise of evil i'm using evil to scare you i that's that's all so i'm paying you to use evil to scare me so how would you answer a Christian that says, well, I'm not scared of it anyway, so it's just a fun adrenaline rush? So why go? Why can't you go go skydiving? It produces a bigger adrenaline hey, Beth, rush. can I, I go skydiving if I don't go to a haunted go, house? Go, to, go, to, go bungee jump. Go, go on a date somewhere where you have no directions and don't know what to expect. Because tell me, if, you, if it's me, <laughs> that's an adrenaline rush. That sounds terrifying. I, that's an adrenaline rush. If I go to with Janino... And we just drive somewhere, and I don't know where we're at and where, where we're going. It's an adrenaline rush. Like, what the heck are we going to experience? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's terrifying. But you know, no, but, but I see go to this. a theme park. You know, go go to go to jump but, on a roller coaster. This, I mean. But you know, we get those adrenaline rushes because we have a fear of falling and speed and like jerking. What's the difference between that and going to a haunted house, though? You know? uh, because it doesn't revolve around evil. So, so for you, it goes back to it's the, sp- the the end point of we're it. supposed to basically stay away from evil. To not give, uh, I, 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 I agree that they took that Ephesians 4, 27 verse out of context, but I think the premise still holds true. The fact of. The more we play around with evil things, the more of a foothold we get, do give to Satan. Well, let's lean into that. So we have, what was the verse? Uh, Roman, Romans 12, 1 and 2, where it's be, uh, be uh, don't be conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind because right. your body is a living uh living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. Yep. I think there's a lot to be spoken of. What are we putting in? Right. And you know, because what puts right. in gets is what gets put out. We've talked about this in our in our tongue tongue uh, episode. Oh, podcast dang, you're going a way long back. time yeah. ago. But we talked about that. You know, the things we take in come out. What we put into our heart, that's what we become. The things we dwell upon. This is you see this all throughout Proverbs, you know, the things that you hold most valuable and Um, These are the things you do. You know, if you love money, put your money where your mouth is. All these little idioms that we hear nowadays, uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's the same premise of what we put in, what we love, that's what we seek. And if we're seeking evil to scare us for an adrenaline rush, what are we putting in and what are we getting out of it? Right. Are we seeking out the right things? And and for me, like again, I don't like going to haunted houses because why would I want to pay you to do that? Like, that just sounds stupid. Uh, if I'm going to pay money, I'm going to enjoy myself, and yeah. it's going to be a good I'm time. going to a theme park like Disney. <laughs> I was going to say Cedar Point, but, you know. Well, I can go to Cedar Disney's Point, too. But, dude, but the Avatar ride at Disney. I didn't, I didn't go on it. I wanted to, but the oh, wait time. Didn't go okay, to what? well, hang on. Time what? out. Excuse. What? Excuse. What? My in-laws had COVID. We didn't know it at the time, and they were pretty miserable that That's day true. we were That's there. That's true. That's true. And we true. ended up leaving and taking them to an but urgent dude, care. Pandora was dope. Yeah. It was awesome. I hear it's pretty cool. It was amazing. Maybe someday. 
very different than what I was expecting. But but either way, but like, you know, if, if someone came to me and said, Mark, do you have a problem with Christians going to haunted houses? My first thing is like, I don't know why you'd want to, but I don't I don't have a problem. But I actually draw a very strong line in horror films, though. And mm. because with a lot of the horror films, now sometimes they, they try to do this. Like, again, I ain't going to watch something that's going to scare me. Now, I actually really enjoyed the movie The Village because of the suspense and the storyline that right. was there. Um, it's like Signs. I, I actually same, never, I fell asleep in Signs. Same director. Uh, really? Same writer, director, yeah. Um, signs is with... Uh, Mel Gibson. Is it Mel Gibson? Mel Gibson oh, I was thinking, who that. was the dude who, uh, I think it who was played Mel in The Gibson. Rookie? Oh, Kevin maybe, Costner? No, you're right. It's the Dennis Quaid. Dennis, is it Dennis Quaid? I, man, I thought it was Mel Gibson, but you might be right. I think it's Dennis Quaid. Oh, right, you keep talking. I'm going to find but, out. But, you know, but with horror films, again, when people, some people are like, oh, I like this, this genre... A lot of times when kids like these genres where they like the Suicide Squads with Joker and Harley Quinn, and then they like um, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Mel Gibson. Dang it, you were right. Uh, but like Five Nights at Freddy's um, is another, I don't know if you've heard of Five Nights at Freddy's, um, and all these different things. And I look at these kids, and, and a lot of times these students, and, and this actually kind of goes to your point, and, and I'm changing my thought a little bit. A lot of these kids that are so ingrained in these for lack of a better word, anti-hero, scary, villainous type things, they kind of turn out with some weird mental things. Like, it's these weird, like, why would you want to watch these things that are just evil and not good? Does that mean you're dealing with something too? Right. Like, and sometimes it might be a, in, in all in all um, seriousness, it might go to some, honestly, to trauma, where that's just what they know, so that's what they're comfortable, and it's kind of a weird, soothing vibe anyways. But it, sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes it's curiosity. It's true. Uh, you know, I, I know of of people and me myself have been curious about spiritual realm. So I'll start digging into demonic stuff, real life. Right. And, and, stuff. and I'm not talking about demonic. I'm talking right. about just like but what I'm scary, saying, scary hooky stuff. Right. But what I'm saying is, is sometimes it's just curiosity. What's that scary? I wonder what a scary movie is like. That's I'm, true. And then you watch it. The Conjuring and you're like, or okay, you watch The Exorcist. Okay, I'm scared. All right. Let's do that again. I, I like the adrenaline run. Let's do that again. And then you start digging more and more, and then maybe it eventually leads to some other stuff. I mean, it, I don't know. I guess to me, I'd rather err on the side of caution, and especially for my family, I'd rather err on the side of caution for these things. Right, and that's why when we, like a, a Zubu, for example, right, over at the zoo, I love Zubu, but I ain't going on the haunted train ride with my kids. I'm not going to have my some dude with a chainsaw jump out and scare the living bejesus out of my six-year-old. Like, that's just, honestly, that's not okay. Like, in my opinion, that's not okay. Um, but you see a lot of people with like the, there's just, there's a weird fascination with evil and, uh, what is it? Jackalobes and, yeah. um, there's just Freddy Krueger. Like there's but a weird fascination, but that's what man. All ho uh, Halloween is all centered around that. And that's why I say for me and my family, we choose not to celebrate it because it's just, that's what it surrounds. It surrounds this intrigue with evil mm. and, e and, and why participate in it? And I'm going to, let's redeem it. Yeah, but let's lean into it. Okay, so let's let's redeem. I, I th th think of the Sochets. They okay. redeem it. They have Reformation Day. Right. They don't dress up. They don't have anything to do with Halloween. They have a Reformation Day. They do a dinner of Reformation with their friend, fr fr fan. Fr I can't even talk. Friends, Friends and family. family. Thank you. So that's what they do. They don't go out and dress up and go out and and seek out to participate in this. And that's okay if that's what you want to do. Fine. Me and my family, we decide not to do anything. We'll go to Fazoli's out to eat, so we ain't got to deal with the door knockers, and that's and you ain't got to deal with the crowd rush, that too. But uh, you know, that's what we choose to do with with our time, and and I think everybody has to be convinced in their own mind of these things. And, and this is where we landed on two years right. ago on this conversation because we both we stayed on two different sides of the fence. And and so with Halloween, we're on different sides, and and on on um, haunted I houses, know. I say we're on slightly different. But with horror movies, for me personally, it's one of those things where. I think people don't take the spiritual realm seriously. I agree. And a lot of times with these horror movies, and I'll, I'll, I'd, I'd talk to my teens who'd watch these movies like, oh, dude, we went and saw The Conjuring. I'm like, why the crap would you do that? Right. Like, seriously, now you're terrified and you're calling me at right. 2 a.m. because you think you see demons. Like, why? Why, why would you do that to yourself? Like, I, I, don't, I don't get the point. I really don't get the point. And, you know, it can go back to a lot of different things. And, and you know, I still have the firm belief of why would I even want to welcome that crap in? Like, why would I want to do that? Um, but you know, and that's where I would encourage you to compare that same line of thought with haunted houses and with Halloween, because it really does follow all the same trend thoughts. If you really look at but it for me, it's not so much away, that side. I'm thinking but, the spiritual demonic side, right? You know? But that's what I'm talking about too. There is a spiritual demonic side to celebrating Halloween and to going to haunted houses. It's all encompassed into one. It's just, we like to pick out and choose the little things 
to say, okay, well, this part's okay, this part's not. This part's okay, but this part's not. You know, I'm okay with eating candy and dressing up, but I'm not okay with animal sacrifice or human sacrifice right. that partakes on that day. And to me, you're still participating in the grander scheme right. of things. Right, but I'm on the side where, you know, just because that happens over here doesn't mean that this part's bad. Right, but it applies with scary movies. Well, this this scary movie is okay. Freddy Krueger's okay to watch, but The Conjuring isn't. Right. It's like, no, they're on the same line. It's the same purpose. It's the same evil behind it all. That's what I'm saying. And to celebrate the evil behind it. Right, and that's what it is. And I can agree with that with Haunted Houses. I can agree with that well, now, as but, we're talking. Yeah, I mean, and uh, you know, I don't think you and I will ever see eye to eye on Halloween, <clears throat> and that's fine. Ever, like I said, the Lord's got to convict who's going to convict, but uh, that's where I see it as, and this is my standpoint, and you know I have a strong stance on this, and uh, we talk a back and forth and disagree now, but you know I don't think any less of you for what you do. I don't, and I hope you don't think any less of me for the stance I take, which I, don't, I know you nope. don't. But I actually hold you in high, regra- high regards for that stance. Right, you know? and exactly. And so, listen, you got to go with what you're convicted at, and that's what I want our listeners. So as far as horror movies... Haunted houses, Halloween, and the like. Let the Lord convict you. Convict you on it. Me personally, I don't. I, don't, I think all three are bad. Mark personally takes issue with with horror films, mainly Slight, dem- mainly demonic, demonic ones, films, right? Yeah. Slightly with haunted houses, but not really. But not and, with trick or treating. Not really with trick or treating. But with the evil behind the Halloween holiday, I think you would agree it's bad. Mm-hmm. Just not with the trick or treating. No, no, that's, that's what it's evolved right. into. No. So I, I mean, that's kind of our stance on on it, and. Now, I want to throw an interesting idea into this mix. You know, I was, I was reading an article from JustDisciple.com, and the article was called, Can Christian Watch Horror Movies? The Bible Answer, which there, it, it, there was a lot more opinion in it than Bible. Um, but they, they, they asked the question of, it, can anything good come from a horror, horror movie? And they actually gave two. It, um, it wasn't so much about this is good, so watch it, but good in terms of awakening people to a reality and it kind of proves some things about like we talk about can you prove the existence of god um and one was the portrayal of the spiritual and like we live in a culture that is increasingly less spiritual but the bible testifies to the spiritual realm horror movies put the reality right in front of people's faces and then the second good thing was the portrayal of evil and we know that evil exists and we can all agree as to what is truly evil showing that there actually is a moral law written on our hearts and so they're not saying these are good reasons to do it. It's more just the fact of the fact of it can cause some good conversations of like, okay, so you watch these movies and you're like, you, you, we want to talk about some spiritual conversations here. And we, we know that's evil, but how do we know that's evil? Right. Um, and I, this 100% he was like, this isn't pros to go watching it and it ain't cons to go against. It's just the reality of, is there anything good that can come out of it? It's the fact of, we all agree that there's something bigger out there than just us. Right. And there's there's evil. There's evil out there. Sure. We all, all agree to that. The, the problem I take a little bit with that logic is that's like saying, well, being a drug addict, there's good that can come out of it. There's It's going to happen. So, you know, if you go do it, there's good that can come out of it. And let's talk about the good that can come out of you being a drug addict, where I think the, the, the stance of the church should be, no, don't even go try it because there ain't nothing good going to come out of it. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you why nothing's going to good come out of it because there's been pin, plenty of people before you that have dealt with this. And take your word. There, there's something about listening to the people that have gone on before you, right? <laughs> the saints that have gone on before you. And there's a reason why we're supposed to give testimonies, our testimony of faith and where we came from to help other Christians that haven't experienced that go, oh, yeah, that'd probably be a bad thing. I probably shouldn't do that. And I think that, and, and, and I'm not, and, uh, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not, as an I'm, not, right, I'm not saying that that's what they're saying, but I read some articles and watched some YouTube videos where they were like, oh yeah, we can gain a lot out of watching, uh, out of watching horror films to really see exactly what these guys were saying, to see the, the spiritual side of things. And we can really learn from these things. And to me, it's like, that's like saying, well, yeah, you can go drink alcohol and get drunk just so you can experience it. So you can talk about it. Like that's absurd. Right. And, and, and this is more the fact of, I think it shows the fact of there's a spiritual there's a spiritual realm out there that we all don't know and understand. Sure. So we're trying to seek to understand, but then there's also the fact of there's evil and the fact of we can't fully understand the spiritual, but we can through Jesus. And we all understand that there's evil and there's a, mor- there's a moral lawgiver. And the fact sure. of we all understand that there's good and there's evil because there's a God. Let's, let's go back to the garden though. Okay. Let's go back to the garden. So in the garden, Adam and Eve knew good. Mm-hmm. The tr- what did the tree actually do? It gave them the knowledge of evil. Of evil, right? Mm-hmm. So they so they want, and she would, Eve was deceived, and so and then obviously, and then obviously Adam, 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 Adam f- followed suit, but they were deceived in thinking that they needed to know what evil was to some extent, that mm-hmm. they'll have the knowledge of God, be like God, if they know what evil is. 
So they went seeking out evil, and I don't think it, I personally don't believe it was out of malice of like, God, screw you. I don't think it was that way at all. It's like, hey, I want to know what God knows. I want to I want to understand like God understands. Just kind of like we are now. Like, hey, I want to live like Jesus. What would Jesus do? That whole persona, you know, it's mm-hmm. and, and we want to we want to live like like God wants us to live. And we want to know things that God knows. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the questions of like, God, how have you always just been? God, why did you create right. Adam if we and Eve all, if, if you knew we, we were going to fall? Know, it's these questions yeah, that we, we know always God have. God to the full extent, he would cease to be God. And sometimes our inquisitive minds gets us into trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes you don't need to know the evil side of things to understand the good side of things. You don't need to. No, and I agree with that statement, yeah. actually. And I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I think it's really good if people are curious, though, about the spiritual realm. There's sure. some amazing missionary biographies that have gone up against demonic sure. presences and witch doctors. Uh, if people are really curious, look up Bob Goff, Sue's a witch doctor. That's one of the greatest stories of Jesus I have ever heard in hmm. my entire life. Um, another one was, uh, I think it was David Brainerd. Or maybe not David Brainerd. It might have been uh, uh, Champlin. I don't remember what his first name was, but basically he went up against the witch doctor, like, like, like old Testament Moses, like you do this, I'm going to do this too. And they went back and And, forth. And I wholeheartedly believe that there are people that are gifted to do that. Right. And I'm not saying everybody is. I'm just saying, if you want to see what it's really like in the spiritual world, going up against, you know, the dark forces, because in America, we don't necessarily deal with that. And I wonder if that's because we're just so distracted that Satan doesn't need to deal with it. But they weren't going up against the dark forces to go up against dark forces because they wanted to. They did it because God- They didn't want to. God happened. God assigned them that task. Because I- I can tell you from my personal experience, and Mark, you know, that when I've dug into researching demonic things and evil spirits and this stuff, I actually get the opposite effect. I get attacked even worse by Satan, and it's like full on presence of. And like we we bad both things. have stories of that. Sure, and so to me, it's like me. I, I'm not even gonna mess with it because I know what that brings, and I'd rather just focus on the things of God. And, the and we wrestle, and it's the fact of, you know, we don't wrestle with, with flesh and blood, which means stop fighting with people, but we right. wrestle against demonic forces, and we wrestle against, right. you know, principalities and spiritual powers that we can't even see. Right. You know, I once was told that there's, uh, I don't even know how many different dimensions there are in the world, but what what would happen if we're literally just on the battleground of a bunch of angels and demons, and we're just walking around doing our own thing? Ignorant. Right. I don't, I don't know if that's totally true or not, but... But you know, but but to end the then the to end the conversation, we both would say, you know, like you know, evil demonic horror movies, Conjuring, all these different things. Why would you even want to? Yeah, why There's even? Mess no with point. <laughs> um, and then I, I I'm even on the side with horror movies of like Freddy Krueger and all these different things. And Chucky, I'm also like. Why the heck would you want? Like, right. I don't understand the reason why you would want to. It breeds bad things. Yeah, haunted houses. I'm saying I'm I'm, get, I'm getting closer to your side. I'm getting closer. I'm gonna think about it a little bit more. Sure. But like when it comes trick or treat, I'm like, man, let the kids have fun, dress them up, let's go get some candy, let's knock on some doors, let's meet some people, and let's you know just let's have a little sugar rush, and then donate the rest of the candy because y'all don't need all that. <laughs> yeah, sure. We brought home like. 13, oh, I remember, 13 I remember last Easter. year. How many how many months after e- or after Halloween were you and I eating Elliot's candy? <laughs> it was bad. It was good, but it was bad. I don't know. Any, so, any last thoughts from you, my dude? No, other than stay faithful and uh and happy Halloween. Keep keep pursuing God over all else. Over cares of this world, over holidays of this world. I like that. I you like know, we that. We got Thanksgiving coming up. God is more Important than Thanksgiving, more important than Christmas, more important than Halloween. Not really more than Easter because that's what it's all about. Man, the spring, he's, he's more important than the uh, spring solstice. But he's hes more important than anything in this world, and that's what we should always continue to focus on. I like that. I like that, my dude. Time for Fun Facts February. <laughs> Bro, I just looked at the timestamp. We are We're going to so get done before an hour. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Wait, Where's We're going to be done before oh, no. an hour. Yeah. Hey. Now, don't forget to change the pad back so we don't get some weird. That's true. Sound. That's true. But before we go, man, we got to let them go with a fun fact. It's a fun fact, but it's not a Halloween specific fun fact. That's okay. Right. We just want That's a fun right. fact. It's we just, just a fun, fun fact. fact. So, we just want a fun fact. the fun fact of the day is a candle's flame is hot and blue in zero, gra- in zero gravity. What? Dif- diffusion feeds the flame with oxygen, and this allows the carbon dioxide to move away from the point of combustion. So, without air, it's very hot, 
Very blue in zero gravity. Really? So if you light a candle up in space, like up well, on, you got like, you got to have some oxygen, right? So, so the fusion feeds the f- flame with oxygen, right? So like but I'm talking like oxygen. inside, like because you know inside the but space shuttles, gravity, there's oxygen and there's no gravity. Well, yeah, so there's nothing to pull it down. You got to have the oxygen for combustion, but it pulls without gravity to pull it down. It like so. My question is, is, does it still spread? Well, you I'm know? sure it does in oxygen enriched environments like a right. space shuttle it just has nowhere to go my question is they've got a they've got i forget what they use there's a certain type of fuel they use in like the space shuttles and rocket ships oh really like, oh, i, I don't know so. all that but uh i forget what it is but i'm wondering if they've got us they've got to um blow some sort of oxygen in there because you got to have to and they don't want people fuel. to blow up well you got to have, have um compression oxygen and spark to create fire and they got to cook. Well, the I guess they got, the, so, they, they got so the quick have, meals. So you got to have something. Well, Someone inform us on how this works because yeah. we don't know. Yeah. So, But this is your fun fact. That's my fun fact. That's that's pretty fun. It, it is a fun. You know what also way. is fun? What's that, People Mark? could reach out to us they in can. so many different ways. RealTalkChristianPodcast.com sure. or at all the social medias. Just search Real Talk Christian Podcast anywhere you can listen to or social media or handles or anything. Even on YouTube. We are there too. And we want to connect with you. We say this all the time, but feel free to text us, email us, DM us, EM us, send a freaking carrier pigeon. I don't even know. Ooh. But oh, wow, that was <laughs> impressive. But you can get in touch with us and we would love to have that conversation yeah. with you. If you're new to show, feel free to introduce yourselves to us because here's the deal. We have a good time, but we don't always know who you are and we would love to be friends with you. And kudos to us. We have gotten back to people that have reached out within a Yay! couple days. Usually we, we respond sometimes the day of, sometimes like a minutes after if you it's send Instagram, us. Instagram, I get back fast. But I'm really getting on the Instagram. Yeah, you is. Uh, Facebook, Facebook, I'm really good with texting, email. I've got it all down. Yeah, you I'm is. Just like, bah, 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 bah. And we want to so, hear your stories, man. Heck yeah. Send us an email with your story and we would love to hear and it. Or if you got any questions. Oh, I wasn't going to say that. Reach out with your questions. Whoa. Can they send us a voice memo question? Question. Ooh. Text us a voice memo and we can get your question live like ve- on air. It could be like Veggie Tales. They could send us like a little video with a voice message, or they could just send us a voice message. We can like, do that. Hey, Bob and Larry, I have a question for you. That'd be great. That would be super cool. Well, dude, our music's about to end, yeah. so should we let them go? Let's let them go. I love it. Well, hey, until next time, take it easy.